There is nothing more special to me in the entire world than getting a group of friends together to play a quick competitive game of Mario Party. Some of my favorite gaming memories in the last few years have been from this series. Ever since I was a kid, I just adored the concept of this game. Collecting coins, rolling dice, getting stars, losing friends, it's all part of the fun. I have always wanted to have a group of people to consistently play this with. It just cannot go wrong. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while now, that may actually be news to you. Throughout my entire YouTube channel history, I have never really touched on Mario Party before. I mean, I've uploaded a few videos back when I started the channel in like 2016. That was seven years ago, are you kidding me? You know what, enough goofing around. Let's actually get into the thick of this. Mario Party, if you didn't know already, has spaces. No shit there. It's a staple of the series that was almost perfected in its first entry. Every game features a specific array of spaces that all do different kinds of things. But some of those spaces would go on to either be forgotten or changed entirely. Some things are just bad from conception, <laughs> like coleslaw. Well, okay, first things first, we're talking strictly about the normal party slash battle royale mode of each game. I'm not gonna be counting any side modes or piss off. Secondly, we're limiting ourselves to the Mario Party entries that involve the classic party formula. Ergo, 1 through 8, DS, Super, and Superstars. I'll elaborate more on that in a bit. Lastly, in order to be classified as a one-off space, the space and its specific properties have to have been introduced and last seen within the same game. I will not be including 9 or 10 due to the fact that both games have an insane amount of new one-off spaces that only works in the context within a cart mechanic basis. We'll go through every game in order and list off the spaces present in that entry. Things are gonna get real technical. Strap in folks, you're officially within the virginity splash zone. If y'all are ready, then let's party! Have you ever wanted to actively hate the game you're playing? Well, I've played Overwatch, so I know what hate playing is. Enter Mario Party 1 on the N64, easily one of Nintendo's most painfully enjoyable games. Take painfully, quite literally. <laughs> this really does hurt. I could like start a fire on the yeah. hot. I think it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. It's dark and hell is hot. While the game gets a hard rap, it had a lot that would become permanent staples in the classic run of Mario Party games. I could go in depth about this game and the other console entries at some point in the future, if the interest is there. In this Mario Party entry, we have seven total spaces. We have the blue space, red space, happening space, minigame space, chance space, mushroom space, and Bowser space. Let's eliminate some of the obvious ones. We all know what the blue and red spaces are, and for the sake of removing fluff, we're not gonna elaborate on them. The happening space is also something that isn't really gonna be touched upon because the entire point of the space is to do something unique on the board. So there's no reason to go in depth about that either. The chance space would go on to return in the next few games following, and for now, there's nothing special due to it being nearly the same technically in two. <laughs> Finally, the Bowser space is the last staple of the core spaces, being in just about every Mario Party game. Every good Mario Party game. Fuck off. Alright, now we're actually getting into it. The minigame space. No other space in the series strictly has the player play in a single player minigame to gain or even lose coins. Whee! While yes, Mario Party 7 is infamous for having single player Donkey Kong and Bowser minigames, which slow that game down tremendously, they don't really count because the space has other outcomes. In Mario Party 1, this space is delegated to just single player minigames. Loser! One thing to note about Mario Party 1 is that the bonus stars are always a factor. You cannot turn them off. That means in every single game of Mario Party 1, you will always have a minigame bonus star to account for. With this knowledge, the minigame space becomes slightly broken and overpowered in this aspect. Let me explain. The minigame bonus star in Mario Party 1 is given to the player who collected the most coins throughout all the minigames. Normally, whenever coins are up for grabs in minigames, every player gets a chance to get some. Obviously, this space breaks that rule that would go on to follow every other entry, and has the one player either get a bonus 10 to that minigame star, 
or minus five, depending if they win or lose. Now, to be fair, the highest amount of minigame spaces on one board is Wario's Battle Canyon at 10. Although that is a huge outlier because 14.7% of WBC's spaces are minigame spaces. So for most boards, they don't really pop up too much. The only instance where it's blatantly overpowered is if you land on the space and whack a plant pops up, if you even have a pulse, you can easily get over 20 coins in this minigame alone. For these reasons, along with the fact that these spaces make games take longer, this space and its specific properties would never return in a future entry. What about the other space? Well, honestly, the mushroom space is more interesting than it is broken or complicated. To put it in simple, slightly incorrect terms, the mushroom space is the double dice before the double dice were even a thing. Upon landing on the space, the player is forced to hit a block to either roll again or lose their next turn. What the f While this sounds simple, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, this space is interesting in the aspect that these can actually stack. This isn't overpowered or broken in any way though, because the odds of it actually stacking is pretty rare. Okay, so this space is inoffensive, right? Wrong. Let me put it into perspective for you real quick. For the most part, people are gonna be playing a 20 turn game in Mario Party 1 because 21 would just be too many. Now imagine you and another player are right behind a star with a max one turn roll. What the <laughs> Now let's say you roll and land on a mushroom space and you get the poison mushroom. <laughs> Not only do you have the odds significantly against you, Here I go! Ding dong! <laughs> Fire! Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck! I'm a Wario! also lose 5% of your total game. Other than that, this space is pretty inoffensive, yeah. Okay, you guys thought that that was complicated. I'm gonna be so real with you, this is a little more complicated. So in this game, we have the blue space, the red space, the happening space, the item space, the chance space, battle space, Bowser space, and the bank space. Blue space, red space, and happening stay the exact same. Literally no changes whatsoever. The Bowser space here is also the same, except there's just different outcomes on the roulette. Chance time, I'll get on that in a second. Entering the ring this time around are the item space, the battle space, and the bank space. Let's start with the item space. Landing on it causes the player to play a board-specific minigame that, when played properly, awards the player with an item. This space would reappear in every game following until five, changing depending on the entry. The next space we have is the battle space. Once someone lands on it, a Goomba comes down from the heavens and takes a predetermined amount of coins from all the players. They then play in a minigame, giving the player in first a majority of the winnings. Second gets their money back, and third and fourth receiving nothing. For the next few entries, this becomes a huge staple with close to no changes throughout. Lastly, we have the bank space. When a player passes it, the IRS holds them at gunpoint until they spew up five coins. If a player lands on it, they collect all the earnings. This would reappear in three, disappear for four, reappear kinda in five. Okay, so all that's left is the chance space. While the visuals, music, and trades have changed, this is still chance time at its core. It's still timeable, although I'd argue it's harder here, and the trades are still extremely similar. Okay, so what the hell? There aren't any more spaces to talk about. 
Well, technically, yes, this game has something that doesn't come back for any future installment. And I also like being difficult, specifically on Pirate Land. There are these two blue spaces that act like happening spaces for seemingly no reason. For whatever reason, the devs decided to make it so when a player lands on either of these two spaces, they're forced to hitch a ride to the opposite side they landed on. The only tell that these spaces aren't normal blue spaces is that they are both placed on docks. So technically, yes, Mario Party 2 does not have a one-off space, but I still think it was worth mentioning because of the weird oddities that they are. win for once my nintendo switch had some style to it hey you do you wish your nintendo switch had some style to it there they go again guess it's that time could you imagine your nintendo switch not having style i sure couldn't i've partnered with switcheries to help fellow switch owners customize their console with style they've got switch cases for every switch model out there they also have thumbstick grips controllers game card cases pouches, stands, bags, oh my god, and all kinds of other little goodies. Is there anything they don't have? Besides that, they have all these beautiful products in such high quality. Themes include Animal Crossing, Pokemon, Zelda, Kirby, Mario, and so much more. They even have anime-themed products for you Studio Ghibli and Demon Slayer fans out there, uh, among others, of course. Know someone who would like these products? Get them a gift card, or actually buy it like the good friend you should be. Go ahead and find something you like. And when you go to check out, apply code ZAK10 for 10% off your purchase. Yeah! And if your order is at least $35, shipping is completely free. Yeah! Go ahead and check out switcheries.com. A link will be in the description below. It's so pretty. It has style. Mario Party 3 is really straightforward. For one, the exact same spaces from 2 return here. We'll quickly re-go over them and the small changes that they had. Blue space hasn't changed. Red space hasn't changed. Happening hasn't changed. Item spaces have a chance of having Toad or Koopa Kid ask you a question for items. Battle space now has a roulette before playing the minigame, with there being a rare chance for there to be zero coins at stake. Bowser roulette actually is timeable rather than pure luck. Chance time is now even harder to actually time, and you can't choose the order. Finally, the bank space is locked and loaded on guns to threaten you until you pay. Okay, still following? Well, there's gonna be a quiz, so you better be. The last space I've yet to touch on is the game guy space. Wow! When a player lands on this space, they are forced to bid every last cent in their name on Lady Luck herself. Every minigame that can pop up here is complete and utter bull luck. You could double, oh. quadruple, uh. octuple, wow. even bigger words that I don't know. Wow! Multiply your coins. Yahoo! <laughs> This is the one Mario Party where coins can really get blown out of proportion here, but in a very, very well-executed way. See, every board in this game has at least 90 spaces, and on every board, there are only two Game Guy spaces, with the exception of Waluigi's Island for its Island of Different Spaces Every Turn gimmick. Wow! So seeing another player land on this space is rare and far between. This space is an easy pick for a one-off space because it literally never returns in any way, shape, or form after this. Wow! I mean, there's something kind of similar later down the line, but we'll get there when we get there. You got all that? Okay, good. I expect this filled out and on my desk in the morning. 